Hey there everyone, this is Chuni Onika, Sonic CD, Zone 2, Collision Chaos, let's continue. Oh yeah, that music, that color palette, this could only be Sonic CD. Shield kind of hidden there, and oh look, it's Amy! Alright, sure, I guess you can come along with us. Oh. Well, I hope you can jump. Oh no! It's Metal Sonic, and we're just gonna make no effort to, uh, try and adventure there. So yeah, Collision Chaos! Second level of the game. First level, of course, was Palm Tree Panic. I do not want that future sign. And Palm Tree Panic was very clearly our Green Hill analog. This is not at all even remotely similar to Marble Zone. And that would be because if you look at the data for this game, if you look in the files... This is not referred to as the second level, it's actually referred to as the third level. And if you remember Sonic 1, the third level was Spring Yard, and things start to make a lot more sense. This is pretty much our Spring Yard Zone equivalent. You might ask what happened to the second level. Did it get, you know, shuffled around? Did it get... Yeah, no, there is no second level. Despite the fact that this game is ostensibly... Sonic 1 with some of the cut content re-implemented? Of course, it has its own cut content. That's a theme we're going to see a lot going forward with the Sonic games. There's a, a fair share of them getting to implement things they couldn't in a prior game, and then as a result, or just out of sheer coincidence, not being able to implement other things, finally got the pass sign. And we're back to the past. And we get this, which I think is a lot more pleasant looking than the, uh, than the Vaporwave hellscape we were just in. Praying Mantis, not so pleasant, but one of the more pleasant Praying Mantis. See, these right here as well, this whole setup very similar to Spring Yard. These ladybugs are adorable. I kind of don't remember them, but they are such a, like, fun little sprite. <laughs> yeah, we're on the lookout for getting hit by a mantis. No, we're on the lookout for... I think it might be up there. The little past robot machine. And yeah, again... Oh, that part of the music. Oh, I love it. I tend to really like the past versions of the stages the most in this game. I kind of just think their aesthetic and their music, which is all done via the Sega Genesis sound chips in the original version, uh, and is persistent through all the soundtracks, because I mentioned before most of the music in this game is CD quality audio, and all of the music that was CD quality audio was replaced for the US version. Yeah, they didn't put the extra effort to program new music though, so... You got the same pass tunes no matter what, which I think that's fine, because... Oh no! Well... We didn't get the pass machine here! But you know what, that's fine. Because we're flipping a dip all yeah, flipping a big dip. These levels are so all over the place. Well, we'll try here to get the past. The good. To, to attain a good future by going back to the past and hitting these weird. frog eggs? I don't know what this is. It is, again, very similar to a lot of what happened in Spring Yard. And despite the fact that this game was being made at the same time as Sonic 2. Yeah, we're gonna see some pretty similar elements. Oh, this, here we go, Speed Trap. So as weird as the level design in this game is, sometimes you'll run across something like that, which is more or less just a free time travel area. I like those, I think they're pretty neat. This whole game is just an absolute trip. I think... If I were to 
recommend this game to someone. You know, first time, no experience with Sonic. I would say, obviously, play it after Sonic 1. And I would say play through it twice. Play through it once, just kind of trying to get a feel for everything, kind of just flying around, seeing all the crazy sights and sounds. If you hit a future post, check out the future. If you hit the past post, try and check out the past. But then do a second playthrough trying to get the good futures. I think the game kind of works best in that way. Of course, I'm just going to be doing one playthrough. I would like to get better at this game, more proficient at it. Again, this is only my third time... I mean, assuming I beat the game, which I will, but this will be my third time beating the game. I mentioned I only played it at length for the first time in Sonic Gems Collection. I did play the original Sega CD version very briefly as a kid. I have a bit of story about that, wherein my cousin had a Sega CD, and I was very excited to play this new Sonic game that I had never seen before, because I didn't have a Sega CD. Oh my gosh. Kamakiri on the Rampage. Why did I say it in Japanese? I don't know. I forgot the name of a praying mantis, and I <laughs> the Japanese name for I don't know what that was. Anyhow, yes, yeah, so she had a Sega CD. I did not, and I was very excited to play Sonic CD. And I saw the intro, like I said, the very crunchy version. I thought it was awesome. Played a little bit of the first stage. And then she said, I don't want to play Sonic CD. It's lame. It's bad. I want to play this better game, Bubsy. And the whole day I had to sit there while she played Bubsy, and I didn't get to play Sonic CD. And uh, if I ever become a super villain, yeah, that's my tragic backstory. <laughs> it was, oh, well, I mean, that's fine. Future's alright. But yeah, that always... I think especially nowadays that we kind of regard Sonic CD as a really good game and Bubsy as, like, one of the worst franchises of the 1990s. Oh, man. I don't know what my aim or goal is in this level. It's been three and a half minutes. And this is a bit of why this game can be sort of grating if you're more from the Sonic 2, Sonic 3, and Knuckles. Oh god. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, family of Sonic games. Because, like, yo, four minutes in a level? What are you doing? I should have beat the entire thing by now. But it does kind of create that air of the stages in this game being a bit of a playground for you to sort of explore and see, like, oh, can I get up here? This crazy gimmick is moving in the other time zones, it's not moving here, so it's a little easier to traverse. And that kind of stuff is very cool with this game. Like, there is definitely a sense of exploration present in Sonic CD that 2 and 3K do not have. And you're either going to love that or hate it. Again, I'm kind of, like, I still definitely prefer Sonic 3 and Knuckles, but I appreciate this game for what it is. I appreciate it for being as different and as just honestly weird and all over the place as it is. Now, see, I don't want to go there. So, like I mentioned, I have no idea where these time machine constructs are. So I could absolutely get lost here forever, and I... honestly... I think the levels are built in a way that there's kind of no point of, uh, like, locked progression, for the most part. Oh, that... that kind of ruins your momentum, doesn't it? How if I do that? Oh, there we go. Okay. So I'm going to assume it's further back. 
Oh lord. So yeah, you can you can see this and you can draw your own conclusions whether or not you think this looks really cool or if it looks really annoying. Because that sort of thing will happen a lot where you're looking for the little robot machine, you're in the past, accidentally hit a time machine, uh, time post, whatever the hell they're called. And then, oh no, you accidentally go too fast, you get put back into the future, but not like Marty McFly. And you kind of just waste a whole bunch of time and... Yeah, like, if you think that's cool, if you think that looks fun... The, all the layers and, like, levels of exploration and different versions of each stage and all the different music, like... If you're more of an exploration person when it comes to video games and platformers in particular... And you're really into, you know, optimizing the route and figuring out, Oh, what's the best way to get all the good futures? Yeah, you're gonna... You're gonna absolutely adore this game, and a lot of people do absolutely adore the game because of that. But for those same reasons, yeah, a lot of people really, really are like, Oh god, this is like the worst one. Again, I appreciate it nowadays, but I was in the camp back in, uh, around, I think 2004 is when... Sonic Mega Collection came out, I was in the camp of people that was like, oh wow, this game's sort of an unplayable mess, and I'm upset that I kind of built it up in my head as this forbidden, perfect Sonic game that everyone talks about is so cool. But yeah, nowadays, I, I do appreciate it for what it is. I like how different it is. I like how crazy things are. And I do want to spend more time with it, and yeah, this, that is part of why I got hit in the face with a caterpillar. Caterpillar? That's not even the right bug. I'm, I'm... This game's doing things to my brains, man. Come on, Yellow Spring. Not gonna bounce me high enough. Don't remember if this game has time overs. Oh wow, look at that. I am back at the beginning of the act. I have made negative progress in this stage. Whoa. Okay, kind of uh, Super Mario world in my way over the world right there. Oh <laughs> uh, man, I really- There it is! And there we go. Well, hopefully there's no time overs. Okay, well my time is flashing. Oh yes, I think I have one minute. I think it's I think it's a ten minute limit. Okay. Well, it should be easy now to get there. Unless I completely waste a whole lot of time like this. Man, this game! There's a little metal sonic thing. We don't care about that. Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Of course now I, I'm having another palm tree panic attack. <laughs> because I'm like, uh-oh, am I gonna make it? But no, I'm pretty sure the goal is like right up ahead. Yep, there it is. Wow, barely made it. Yeah, so that's how... <laughs> that's how this game can go. And oh boy, if you are not into that, you're not gonna like it. But, because I failed to make a good future in Act 1, we're in the bad future version of Act 3. So yeah, you have to make a good future in each zone. Alright. <laughs> He's just kind of chilling down there. To get a good future... Yeah, you have to make a good future in Act 1 and 2 to get the good future in Act 3. Makes sense, but again, yeah, something to be aware of. Here's this funk music again. So, hey! You ever think that uh, there should be a whole Sonic game that's a pinball game? No? 
Yeah, me either. Even if the music's really good. This boss, this powerful pinball machine, is... Honestly should have been a thesis statement for why Sonic's pinball shouldn't exist. <laughs> oh, man. But, again, since this was being developed concurrently with Sonic 2, yeah, you could see them really leaning into the pinball level gimmick that I was talking about back with Spring Yard. Oh, man, this music is pretty funky. So, this Eggman is actually attacking me here, but he's not doing a very good job. And if I'm in a ball, I just kind of destroy his bombs. Really? He kind of just wastes my time? Kind of a funny thing, I guess, in a game with time travel, that there's a lot more wasted time in this than in other Sonic games. Because, you know, instead of just attacking the boss, you gotta beat his wacky pinball tower, and instead of just beating the level, you gotta search all around for the robot machine. It's it's pretty goofy. And then, yeah, you just hit him three times, and that's the end. Collision Chaos! Uh, certainly a lot of chaotic nonsense, certainly a collision of my brain cells. I definitely prefer Spring Yard to this nonsense.